Welcome to Jade Learning. I'm Jeff Simpson and today we are discussing the markings on the motor nameplate. Very exciting topic. Actually not so exciting, but listen, if you're dealing with motors, troubleshooting, repairing, replacing, installing new, we have to know what the values on the motor nameplate represent. Every motor should have a nameplate. If your motor does not have a nameplate or if the values on it are burnt because of overheating, it's probably time to replace the motor. Okay, so here is your typical motor nameplate. Not all of the values on this motor nameplate are code required to be there. Some of them are optional markings that we would use in order to select the correct motor for our application. NEC 430.7a provides us with all of the items that absolutely have to be on the motor nameplate. Here we can see that we have the manufacturer's name. His address is off to the right. We have our horsepower. This is a 20 horsepower motor. We have our motor voltage. This is a motor that can be used in several different voltage configurations, anywhere from 208 to 230 volts. We can also use it in a 460 volt application. How about nameplate ampacity? All right, so nameplate ampacity is going to be used for selecting the proper motor overload device. So in this case, what is the ampacity of this motor? It's going to be different than the values in the tables in part 14 of article 430 and it's going to be dependent on the applied voltage that we're using this motor in. So at 208 volts this motor is rated at 50 amps. At 230 volts 46 amps and at 460 volts 23 amps. How about motor speed? Motor speed is a required marking that has to be on the nameplate and it's got to be in revolutions per minute not slow, medium, or fast. This is a single speed motor. I can tell that because it says 3510 RPM. There's only one value showing. If there was multiple values like 3510 slash 1755, then I'd be looking at a multi-speed motor. Now we can still connect the motor up to a VFD, a variable frequency drive, and we can adjust the speed of the motor. But without that accessory, this is simply a single speed motor. Frequency, this motor is marked for 60 Hertz. This is the frequency for the electrical system in the United States, so we could install this in the United States. Number of phases. We need to know if we're looking at a three-phase or a single-phase installation. We need to know if our system is single or three-phase. We wouldn't want to use this three-phase motor in a single-phase application. Lock rotor indicating code letter. This motor has a code letter H. What is a lock rotor condition? A lock rotor condition occurs whenever your motor, for some reason or another, cannot start when we apply voltage to the motor. So whether it's a motor problem or whether it's the load that the motor is driving, something has stopped the motor, it will not operate whenever we apply voltage to it. This is a lock rotor condition. We can take this code letter over to table 430.7b. We can do a little bit of math and then we can find out the locked rotor current in a lock rotor condition. Motor design letter, this is a design B motor. The design letter is a NEMA design letter and it specifies certain performance characteristics like torque and slip. Motor insulation class, this motor is a class F insulated motor. Okay, so your insulation class of your motor is all about the operating temperature of the motor at the hottest place inside the motor. This is also a NEMA classification. Basically, this is telling us that if this motor never operated higher than 155 degrees C, then we can expect to get about 20,000 hours of life out of the motor. If we continually operate the motor higher than 155 degrees C, then it's going to greatly reduce the life expectancy of the motor. Service factor, temperature rating, we're going to take these values along with the nameplate ampacity and we're going to go to 430.32 in order to determine what percentage of the nameplate amps to use to select the correct size motor overload devices. How about efficiency? This motor is marked with a 91% efficiency. This is a very efficient motor. The closer we get this number to 100%, the more efficient the motor is. So basically what this means is 9% of the electrical energy that we supply to this motor is consumed as we convert electrical energy to mechanical energy. Enclosure type, there's lots of different motor enclosure types. 
This one says TEFC. What does TEFC stand for? This is a totally enclosed fan cooled motor. Question. This is an easy question for anybody who's paying attention or just has a good head on your shoulders if you haven't been paying attention. What application can we use this motor in? And the answer is B. This is a three phase motor that automatically rules out answer choices A and C. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and take care of your motor.